Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect, and today we're be getting ourselves into some crops and Tinker's Construct. So, I hope you guys are ready. So I'm all backpacked up and, uh, well, ready to go for today's episode. And today, we're going to be working on crops and uh, potentially moving into the advancing category. Where we're going to get into flint sieving, Tinker's smeltery, like the actual smeltery, getting into some anvils and stuff, and maybe getting into some nicer tools, and basic automation. But first, let's take a look at some stuff that's probably going to help us uh, early on, and things that we probably should have been doing uh, already. And that is basic crops getting started. So seagrass is something that I have collected a bit of. So I do have a nice selection of seagrass here. This can apparently be tossed in the water. And that turns into regular grass. I know, how weird. Like, look at all this. It goes all the way down there when you do that. I wonder if you just, like, can toss it in, like, a single thing of water. If, like, that would be a better way to, of doing it than throwing it in the ocean. Um, but what we can do with this is we can get ourselves some grass. Uh, good thing is, is we have plenty of rooms now, so the rooms are not going to be difficult for us to do this in. Um, so I have grass. I've been working on dirt. I, I do have dirt. Uh, it, it's right here. There we go. Uh, so 32 dirt. And then I also have a whole stack of dirt here and here that I've been processing. So what can we do with this grass? Well, we could place it on dirt and then break it. Or we could use bone mill, which is a, a pretty much a, res a renewable resource. Or we can sieve the dirt. There's a lot of different things we can do. So first of all, let's go ahead and get um, a little area set up for grass. I want passive mobs to try and spawn in here. Um, and it recommends at least like a 5x5 five five area. So if we were to make a nice little 5x5 five five area in this room, uh, that should be plenty for mobs to be able to spawn in. Of course, I might actually just want to turn this whole thing into grass. It's going to take a little bit of time as I need to swap all these blocks. Um, and I don't, I, I haven't spent the, the coin on uh, making, a, getting a block exchanger. Even though, man, I almost should. It's only 15. You know what? We're doing it. We're getting the exchanging gadget. It is going to be well worth the investment. Oh, I, I'm actually glad I did this. It's going to save me so much time. Um, now, I do need coal to power that, though grab some of our charcoal and oh the exchanging gadget it's such a nice like nice tool um and i'm gonna go ahead and use that i should or that should be enough for right now i'm gonna use it to place this grass so um we go ahead and right click here we can open up the menu we can make this a bit larger and it's only gonna affect the blocks that we currently have selected as you can see it just changed them and it actually gave me the wood back into my inventory so i don't have to do the whole diving bit or I gotta swim all the way back under here. So like I was saying, we could, uh, you know, probably break grass. Like that's one thing that we can do. So if we grow this grass up over here on the actual grass that we just invested in and break, we will get some seeds, we will get some flowers, um, but we're probably gonna have a better chance of getting a variety of flowers, or not, not of flowers, a variety of seeds if we go about this a different way. Um, it does recommend inside here, all the way up here, um, to go ahead and make grass and then sieve the grass to be able to get a diverse set of seeds. Um, and we can do that in, uh, you know, in this over here. Let's go ahead and throw that there. 31. We can just go at, oh gosh. <laughs> There's no texture for this, but it does give us stuff. The texture is just not there. They were like, you're gonna be sieving grass? What's wrong with you? But yeah, there we go. We just got a little bit of seed. Um, so we got a fern seed. Okay, so ferns are a thing. Um, we got melon seeds, cabbage seeds, and a little bit of beetroot and some pumpkin. Not horrible. Uh, I believe there are more things, though, that we can get from sieving this stuff. Um, so if you take a look at the sieve, you can see right here, just with the string mesh alone, it seems like all the meshes are the same. But what we should get is the chance for tomato seeds and... Um, and that's the only one we seem to have not gotten is the tomato. So I'm going to go ahead and sieve a little bit more and hopefully be able to get that one. So nine more grass and I ended up getting the tomato seeds I need. Um, now, we need to make ourselves a hoe, but I was thinking instead of doing that, how about I just go ahead and utilize Tinker's Construct? Like, we should be able to make this, which I believe also acts as a hoe, right? 
Um, it's effective on wood, dirt, sand, gravel. It's a versatile tool, and I'm pretty sure it does work on everything <laughs> as far as that goes. Um, so this and a, a tool rod that is made out of wood. Well, normal wood anyways. Of course, we have all this different variants of wood. You know, also sticks, by the way, can work in here. So if you do want to utilize sticks, they also work. Um, yeah, and this is a very simple Tinker's tool. There we go. And let's see. Does it actually work? I don't know. Will it hoe the ground? It does. Uh, well, not really hoeing the ground is, yeah, that is a grass path. That's more or less working like a shovel. Well, I guess it's, uh, we're going to be making a hoe. Actually, doesn't a comma act as a hoe now? Yeah. Yeah, it harvests and replants crops. Yeah, this is the comma does all that. Wow, I am totally you can tell Tinkers <laughs> Tinkers has changed a bit for me and I'm still learning it learning the new setup for this. Uh, what does this require a regular sword blade and it's like making a sword basically, but you have a binding and then we have a regular tool rod. Okay, so yeah, the comma should act like a hoe. Look at this. Mr. Chosen smart over here. Big brain chosen. <laughs> Trying to remember old school stuff. There we go. What did what did this do? Shallow dirt. What in the world did, did I make? But anyways, this is going to get the job done. And you know what? My goofy self have been using shear steel. And I forgot that the comma acts as a shear. And it's just a, a constant repairable stone shear. Ah. <sighs> You know, you know, I, I will definitely be learning from this mod pack for sure, <laughs> especially for future up for future mod packs. So now that we have those seeds, I think we should move on to a little bit more of an advanced seed recipe. Um, so we have the culinary station. That's something that we can craft. But I was looking at this ceramic organic water bucket. Now, this has organic water, which is something that we're going to need to be producing later on. Um, and I was taking a look at the recipe for it, and it's just like leaves. That can go in here. They make 20 millibuckets. Like, melon slices make 50. 200 for a full pumpkin. And, like, we just throw leaves and stuff in here, and we're going to make organic water. Organic water is probably going to be pretty useful. And I can put it here um, above the lamp. It's going to give us a nice speed on this. And just do like we were doing with everything else. Put a hopper here. And we can probably throw a chest on this. Um, but, yeah, let's throw some uh, leaves in here and get some uh, organic water <laughs> producing up. I mean, that's... Only the way to go, I think, at the moment. So this is actually kind of a cool crafting recipe. Like, if we take a look, there's it's it's a water crafting, or a fluid crafting. Fluid to item recipe is what this says. So we need watermelon seeds, we need um, wheat seeds, and then a fern. Now, of course, you can get your fern from the comma, and we got fern seeds. Um, now, getting more ferns, I don't know if you can... Can you bone mill a fern? Like, these are vanilla mechanics that you think I should know, <laughs> but I don't remember. Can you, like, bone mill a fern to get more ferns? I mean, we can- we can try it. I don't know why- why not? Um, I mean, it- Tall- double tall flowers do this. If- if it's double tall, if we shear it that's double tall, we get double the ferns! <laughs> yes! So we can bone mill this. And it does give you double. Very nice. So we don't have to worry about seeds here. We can just use the bone mill from our mob farm to double up on a recipe. Perfect. So that's a perfect little tip if you didn't know. Of course, I didn't know either. <laughs> it's good to share the knowledge together. Now, I went ahead and picked up my bucket of organics here. I went ahead and made myself a little room. This is just a trap door that is placed in the water. But if I place my fluid here, notice it... It's not the same color, which is fine, um, but uh, it could be a little confusing if you think it's water. Let's pop over here. Let's get ourselves a melon. I think this this should work. I think the proper tool, by the way, is a hoe now for melons. Um, we end up getting some melon slices. Might as well grab that pumpkin too. And do we have anything over here bone milled? We can go and grab that wheat. Still waiting for the beet roots to fully be grown. There we go. <laughs> we're just like completing little uh, side uh, quests as we're doing this. Um, so I have my seeds. We have our fern and we have our melon. What all do we need for cactus seeds? Fern, seed, and a melon seed. We get a melon seed stripped simply from this. 
So we toss these in. It consumes it. And we just got ourselves a cactus seed. Very nice. So we can now make cactus. However, this did not complete because we don't have an actual ceramic bucket. So I'm gonna have to get a, I'm gonna have to put some ceramic together and make myself a ceramic bucket. So of course we have another recipe that we need to complete. This one's gonna make sugarcane seeds, and really all we need is one of each of these, which is really nice. We can place that down, toss them in, and we have ourselves the sugarcane. And then last but not least, we have the bamboo, which isn't as important to me, but it is beetroot, wheat, and melon slices. Um, beetroot, wheat, and melon. I have a melon. We have beetroot and another piece of wheat, which I don't think is fully grown yet. <laughs> oh yeah, we got some wheat. Perfect. Then go ahead and grab that. So we and there we go. Grab another bucket of this. And by the way, this is going to be used later on in a smeltery recipe. So get ready for that because things are going to get a little wonky here. Oh, did I put those in wrong? Uh, what is it again? It is... Melon, beetroot, and seeds. Oh, I thought it was wheat. And there we go. So that is all the main sections here done. Of course, I just need to get areas to plant these things. And those are going to end up... There's carrot seeds. Oh, there's even more. So once we get these, then we have these simple recipes here. Where we just throw the remaining in here to further our, our plant gathering, which I definitely want. Yeah, I definitely want some potatoes and other things. Now, it's been a little bit since I've used Snad, but Snad is in this pack. And, uh, well, I want to give this a little bit of a try. By the way, is this going to... Yeah, it doesn't affect that. So, as you can see, I placed a little bit of redstone there. A little sneaky, sneaky redstone. Right here we can place our cactus. Right here we can place our sugar cane. If this is the way that I remember, turning this on and off, does it? Is it affecting the Snad? It, it's not. It used to. Pulsing redstone signals used to affect the growth rate of this, but it doesn't seem like that works anymore. Oh, so unfortunate. But hey, at least this will grow. Um, now, bonus, I'm probably going to put a lot of these crops and stuff inside of these hopper botany pots, including this and most of every single crop that we have in here. So... Don't expect this to last very long. This is just for me to get a, a sustainable crop up for now. Yeah, because eventually all this is, is going to go up inside of these things. So the more I was looking, yeah, most of these crops actually can't go in these, uh, these botany pots. However, a couple can. Like bamboo, for example, can go in here. This can actually go in there. Um, and we can put the snad in there, and that is going to be a bonus for us. Let me go ahead and close this off here. I want water spilling out everywhere. Also, sugar cane can go there. So if we if we remove this little setup here, we move it somewhere else. Um, how about we, we move it over here, for example? The snad is actually going to help this a lot. Same with the sugar cane. All of this. And so this is technically an organics kind of farm. And I guess we could use this sort of setup, you know, to kind of power this thing if we really wanted to. So there's some automation stuff that is going to be going on here soon. I, I almost feel like that's going to be the case. Now that we have enough space, we might be able to get some farm animals to show up. So right here is some chicken bait, and that's pretty simple to make. And we can plant one of these for right now. Um, once we get enough resources for more, we can, of course, plant some more. Now, um, it does recommend having some environmental stuff, but I believe all it really needs is grass and some water that it can be next to. So, so long as those criteria, criteria are met, you can see right here, you are too close, the animals are scared away, um, you just move away. And I think that's fine. I don't even think, it, I don't think it cares about the mobs over there. So far as you give it a little bit of time and you're away from it, it'll work. <laughs> so, um, it should eventually spawn on us. Now, that is going to move us into some other stuff. There's parrot bait and turtle bait. I don't know how much we are going to need a lot of those things. Turtle bait like can be made like this with carrots and eggs from a chicken. Um, the parrot bait. Make sure you have lots of grass, trees. Um, create a good area for them to spawn. Parrot seed. Jungle biome blocks like jungle trees, vines, and grass. So maybe we're, we're going to need different things. 
But yeah, chickens are definitely going to be an important thing. Once we get at least one chicken, we can get some eggs spawning, which is going to be kind of nice. So we take a look at Inferium Seeds. These are something that is recommended eventually in this tier here. Notice it kind of gets expensive. We have Birch Seeds, which I don't even... I guess these, these come from leaves. I guess if we sieve enough leaves, we'll get these. So, I mean, that's not crazy. Sweet Berries... Those will build up over time. I did just now make um, some sweet berries. So eventually having some kind of sweet berry bush farm, probably going to be a good idea. Um, I don't know if sweet berries can be, I don't think they can be harvested in, in these uh, other ways. But this seed, to get a regular Inferium tier 1 seed, I mean, it's doable. But I mean, we're going to have to do a lot of sieving. Um, but speaking of sieving, speaking of sieving. We should probably, instead of working on this, while we're waiting on chickens and stuff, let's move into flint sieving and get into this section. And it talks a little bit about getting cinnabar and niter. These things all come from this. Like, literally right here. It comes from sand, the two different types of sand. So moving into some really simple stuff as far as ore processing goes, um, I went ahead and swapped out my casting table, and, uh, well, we're going to go ahead and actually make the chunks out of these. Now, you see how I crafted those there? You don't really have to do that. You can hit K on them, and that's going to make it a little easier on you as well um, on your keyboard. I keep mentioning that because I know people are probably going to forget. Um, but also, we can cast things with sand now. It is so nice that we can do this. There are other ways we can do this, like we can use red sand or whatever. But we can actually use sand. So the old method of uh, using like a, um, a good old-fashioned, uh, what was it, clay? You do a clay cast first. I don't, you might still be able to do a clay cast. I don't, I don't know if a clay cast still is a thing, but uh, this is definitely the new method of doing this, which is kind of cool. Um, I do want to grab myself. I thought I had a bar laying around because I was actually still going to use a block of clay. Yeah, I was going to use a brick. So yeah, you can utilize a brick on this. So you place this in and this is a lot, in my opinion, this, this makes more sense because this is kind of what you would do. It'd be kind of cool, though, if, like, the sand, there was a method of refining the sand first. Maybe you take sand and you pour it into a cast, and that is called refined sand. And then you take the sand, and then you break it down. I'm just, I'm trying to make sense, and that's, that's, <laughs> I should probably stop. I'm going to be uh, giving people ideas. All right. <laughs> They're making things harder. So, yeah, we can go ahead and cast that in. And as soon as that's ready, it's going to automatically cast. And then, of course, it's going to end up down in here, which is exactly what we want. So automation of this, we already have it really set up. So all you have to do is take a chest and just plop that on top for right now. Of course, we're going to make this a lot bigger soon. So as far as um, the automation goes, it will get a bit faster. At the moment, it is going to be pretty slow, but it will get us the base resources that we need. Um, and... Is it a one-time use on the cast? That's what I don't know. Okay, so it is a one-time use on the cast. So it's not automated yet. Not yet. It will be, but it's not yet. We still have to do the process of sand and ingot in here. So, okay. Interesting. Is it consuming? It actually utilizes one of the bricks. I just noticed that. So it still consumes the brick, which is kind of weird <laughs> that it does that. You would think that it would just give it back. But hey, we have somewhat of materials now being pumped out, which gives us some tin. And now we need to get one of each of the materials out of here. So now that I have all the ingots out, I think it's I think it's about time for an upgrade. I don't know about you, but we're going to be upgrading this bad boy. And what we need is a casting basin. We're going to need this seared heater and we're going to need four copper. That's right. Four coppers got to go in this bad boy. That's going to get smelted up. And uh, then we just place the seared heater inside here. And this is how you make a smeltery controller in the new Tinker's Construct. I, You know what? I didn't make the recipe. But it does kind of fit. You know, the copper border around the front of the smeltery. It really makes sense. So, as you can see, we now have a smeltery controller. Um, however, we still need a few more things for this. We're also going to need um, a seared drain, and I believe the drain requires two more copper, which I don't quite have just yet, but you need to farm a little bit more copper. Other than that, we do have plenty of seared brick, 
So making our smeltery, it's going to be pretty straightforward as far as uh, casting and everything goes. Um, I think this is going to be pretty straightforward, like I said. Um, and by the way, I think this is doubling our copper. I don't know if this is going to double our copper or not, but it's going to be worth getting this built as soon as possible. So I'm going to sieve, and literally, by the way, this just came, so this kind of give you an estimate. We ended up getting like five copper and uh, eight nickel and about five or six um, tin, and that came from one stack of sand and one stack of red sand. So, and that was just sieving this here on our flint mesh. So just keep that in mind. That's about the rough amount that I'm getting from this. So this is a cool little factoid here. Look at this. So in a smeltery, it's twoing. It's in a melter. It's one ingot and three nuggets, which is really weird. Um, but we do get nuggets, which means that basically you'd want to do three at a time. Definitely three at a time in order to maximize your production inside the melter. And that way you end up getting four <laughs> for the price of one. Um, so yeah, we should have four ingots by doing it that way. Definitely a, a little tip that you may glance over, um, if you're trying to be, like, really productive with your resources. But we're about to switch this to a full-blown smeltery, so things are about to get a little bit easier. Now, this is showing me here to do a small, a very, very small, like, one by one. Like, you can get away with a one by one. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, you can. I'm not gonna go that small right off the bat. Or should I say right off the, the shoot? I really need to stop. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's make the uh, the seared drain. So that's pretty simple to make. And then also the uh, the seared shoot, which uh, both of these things are, are kind of important. And I definitely recommend you uh, you having them. You're going to need your copper. And so a seared shoot and a seared drain. Both of those. Nice. The seared shoot, by the way. Um, it's going to allow you to hopper items in, and the seared drain um, is going to allow you to pipe the items out, like the fluids. Keep in mind that you don't really need the chute. You still can hopper items into the smeltery controller if you really want to. Um, and then later on, we do have some configurability, depending on uh, how we actually get cobalt, because I know cobalt is utilized in the smeltery drain later on down the road uh, for, like, blocking things off. So let's go ahead and build one of these things. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. I, I think I want to place this, like, on the back wall here, where I have the leaves. And this chest, you've got to go. Chest has got to go. And we, we don't have to make this thing, like, super, super big or anything. Let's see. Um, do I want to make this base level? Hmm. I was thinking about having this be the face. I don't want it sticking out too far. <laughs> I could leave it right here and just have like a three by three. You know what? I, I'm going to go with that. You guys may laugh at that and think that looks really goofy. But you know what? It's all about just being functional. That's that's all that's all this is about. So I can go ahead and break these corners. We don't actually need them. And yes, I am going to make a very weird looking setup here. Uh, so we're going to have a seared tank here. We're going to have our seared drain here. Controller in the middle. And then I guess we can put the chute here. Why not? Right? And then we can just make this taller. Uh, now, one of these uh, was a um, a ladder. Tinkers does have a ladder style, which is this right here, which is really cool. And uh, will allow us to get in and out of our smeltery if we want to. Um, so I might put it right here. Set it up like this. As you can see, we can get up on top and we can keep walking up and up and up. And make this as tall as we really want. I mean, because we don't have much room elsewhere. So going vertical is all we really can do. Okay. So we have this built, right? And it's working. It has a couple of storage slots. It's not anything fancy. Um, and we also need to make sure we have lava provided with it. And then we're going to do the same sort of automation that we set up before, where we have a hopper that's going to lead into a chest, but it's going to be a little bit lower underwater here as I need to place that there and then place my chest. That thing is too close to me for my comfort. Let's see. Can we place a chest? I guess it doesn't matter what direction the chest is facing so long as we have one. 
And then we'll get our hopper. And get that bad boy placed in. If I can. Wow, how did I manage to place it under... I don't know. But we can always use this to get back up, which is kind of nice. There we go. Okay, perfect. So, we'll get the automation set up. By the way, the, the thing is kind of nice being waterlogged here. I kind of like it. I'm kind of digging it. Alright, and we'll get the cast set up. Now, at the moment, it's not automated, but uh, surely we're going to be able to automate it. We can use a lever. That's very, very simple. Um, now, as far as a cast goes, we don't have an ingot cast yet. But I think we can make one pretty easily. Right now, we have seven golden nuggets. All we need is a couple more nuggets, and we're golden. Like, literally... That was a bad pun. We're literally golden. I have phantoms up here. <laughs> I haven't slept in a while. <gasps> These guys go underwater to get me? No, no, no. I'm out. I'd rather buy them. I'd rather buy them than deal with these guys. <laughs> I need to sleep. Okay, the TNT guy dropped some some more gold nuggets. Oh, man. But that's enough. <laughs> so we can skip this section and actually make ourselves a cast. Oh, that's going to be nice. Okay. So to make a cast, let's go ahead and throw the nuggets in there. And then all we have to do is just cast from any ingot, I think. Like, this should even cast. So the gold's in there. That should create us a golden cast. And there we go. Now, now we're cooking. Like, literally cooking. That was also a pretty bad pun. Okay, so we can shoot this. Put the chest there. Throw that in, that in, that in. Flip the lever. And we have automation. Uh, well, kind of. I almost forgot. Let's turn this off. Some of these materials are going to, to mend together. They're going to blend together. So maybe not so much on the automation part. Maybe we should take this one at a time until we know exactly what we need. But look at that. It works. So now the last thing for this section is going to be the bronze. So we do need to make some bronze. And uh, the recipe for that is three ingots of copper to one tin. So if we throw that in, three ingots of copper and one tin, and we make sure that this is all thrown in, but you can also put it in by hand, like for simple things like this, throwing it by hand so you don't have to put it in here. So there we go. Constantine? Or Constantan. Is it Constantan or Constantine? I think it's Constantan. Constantin. Constantan. <laughs> I know I, I always call it Constantine, and people are like, there is no teen at the end of this. It's Constantan. I know I always say it wrong. Sorry. Well, guys, I hate to break it to you, but it is the end of the episode. And of course, I want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video. And that is going to go to Roz's Coding. Roz's Coding. I kind of like that name. Um, anyways, thank you so much, by the way, for uh, for being a patron and supporting the content that I make. And guys, if you're interested in becoming a patron yourself and supporting the videos that I make, of course, you can find that link down in the description below. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Of course, if you did, be sure to click that subscribe button and also give this video a huge thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Of course, I'll see you guys in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.